I think the world is ready to be done with 2020. We are ready for a new year, and at the Global Health Education Initiative, we are very excited to tackle 2021 with our first month of content, focusing on the innate immune system. This year, we are gonna make one of the most extraordinary global decisions in history around human health, and it is related to this unknown factor of human longevity and health that we refer to as the innate immune system. The decisions we're gonna make in the next few weeks towards a virus that we've been told is a unique experience in human history, this pandemic. We are making some global health decisions that are gonna radically change our relationship to the virome. This massive ecosystem of viruses that carry the genetic information that allows for adaptation and microbiology to do what it does best, which is adaptation and biodiversification at the cellular level, at the molecular level, at the macro level of ecosystems planet-wide. The virome is literally the language of life on Earth. Without the virome, we would have never adapted to any life forms on the planet. And so it's with great excitement that we welcome in an opportunity to explore a relationship that is billions of years old, that of cellular life to the virome and the relationship between the two. The narrative that's been told to us is that humanity is desperately awaiting some new technology to change our relationship to this one virus. It's important for us to start to frame that in the relationship to the science of the last 30 years that has taught us something extraordinary. Scientific revolutions of this scale have only happened a few times in human history. You can look back 2,000 years ago to see Pythagoras discover that the, the world was not flat but a sphere. And then 1,600 years later, we would, with this telescope, discover that the Earth was not at the center of our solar system or in fact near the center of the universe at large. These were cataclysmic events in our understanding of who we are as humans. It changed not just science but socio-religious viewpoints and beliefs about our self-identity and what we're here to do. The discovery of the last 30 years around the virome, the microbiome, and our innate immune system is one that blows all of those other discoveries out of the water. The discovery is profound. It is that the human cell is not, in fact, the center of human health. That is an extraordinary discovery that is so disruptive to not only our understanding of who we are biologically, but to macroeconomic systems. We spend billions of dollars of basic science research, clinical research, with the belief that we have to battle away the germs around us, that we have to attack the world before it attacks us. We also have this attitude of manifest destiny that because we are the most enlightened being on the planet, we have the right to destroy all other life around us so that we can procreate and populate more aggressively, so that we can consume resources and sequester wealth for ourselves over any other species. That manifest destiny has come back to bite us badly. We are, in fact, undermining life on Earth for not just the planet around us, but for our, the survival of our species. It turns out that the last 30 years has revealed that we are not here against all odds. We are not here against Mother Nature herself. We are here because of the result of nature and her brilliant messengers within the virome and the foundation of life within the microbiome. And so with this, we need to start to open up our minds that perhaps the next technological breakthrough we're waiting for is not some new smart bomb to the virome or some secret missile of a to knock out this one virus but in fact our next revelation of health and in fact maybe human purpose on this earth is to find out that we have a place a cared for place a nurtured space within nature herself that she's been calling us to since the origin of life for the last 200,000 years humanity has been waiting to find out why we're here what are we here to do and bizarrely, this issue around a vaccine and the adaptive immune system is bringing new life to, and new perspective to this crisis point of self-identity as a species. The story that we've been told is, is that we need this new technology to come along to change our immune system's relationship to this one virus, this one virus that's called SARS-CoV-2. The reason that has such a long title to it is because we've seen other coronaviruses that are almost identical. And we have seen these for about 780 years in the human record as we can record it. 
We have a hard time tracing that any further back in time, but it's unlikely it started 780 years ago with the coronaviruses and the human experiences. Nonetheless, to say that we have a new pandemic of a coronavirus is profoundly scientifically inaccurate. What we have is an adaptation of a small genetic element within a coronavirus that has changed our relationship to our e ecosystem around us. It's changed our relationship to the air we breathe, the oxygen that we need. This new protein is changing not as an attack mechanism, but changing and revealing vulnerabilities within our own immune system's instability. And so, of course, those of us that have had huge morbidity and mortality from this last year of events, of course, we're set up for that through severe disruption of our innate immune system. The innate immune system is a beautiful thing. This is what kicks in in the seconds after a new antigen is detected within the human body. Interestingly, an antigen is very rarely the virus itself. The virus itself is actually covered with proteins that are recognized as being friendly and homogenous to the human biology, and it's by design. The coronavirus, for example, is covered with human proteins that target it towards human receptors on our lung surface, on our vascular surface, so that we can integrate this new genomic information to make adaptive changes within our biology. With that intelligent adaptation, we actually become resilient and resistant to other forms of disordered relationship to the microbiome. If we successfully see coronavirus and our body adapts to it through that innate immune system, there is actually no need for the vast majority to ever make an antibody to that virus because we've kept in relationship to it at the innate immune system level rather than the adaptive immune system level in which we would have made an antibody weeks later. What I just said is very important, and perhaps you've discovered this on your own this year, that perhaps you got a severe upper respiratory illness that was suspicious for some sort of coronavirus-like illness, and you went and to your doctor and said, I think I had COVID-19 two weeks ago. And they'll say, well, that's quite possible. Let's go ahead and have you come back in a month, and we'll check antibodies to see if you were exposed. The timing of that is very important. They know that you do not have an adaptive immune response to the virus that was there a couple weeks ago until three, six, eight weeks after the exposure to the antigen. What this means is that the innate immune system, way beyond or way before we ever make an antibody, has to make an adaptive decision on how to manage the protein production from this new genomic information coming on in the form of a virus. This innate immune system happens within seconds, not weeks or months, of exposure to this new antigen. And so, in fact, it is this way that we stay in relationship to the 10 to the 15 viruses. That's a one with 15 zeros after it. 10 to the 15 viruses that are in my bloodstream right now. 10 to the 15 is such an extraordinary milieu of genomic information that it is impossible that my body needs and requires the relationship to 10 to the 15 new antibodies at any given moment to deal with this genetic information within my own bloodstream. In the air that I breathe, 10 to the 31 viruses, and that's not twice. It's easy to think maybe 10 to the 30 is twice as much as 10 to the 15. We're talking about logarithms times 10 with every zero. So add another 15 zeros on the end of it, and at 10 to the 31, you're now at 10 million times more than our stars in the entire universe is the viruses that I breathe. And so 10 to the 31 viruses in the air, another 10 to the 30 viruses in the soil beneath my feet right at this moment, another 10 to the 31 viruses in the ocean water, we are literally alive within a massive sea of genomic information that we call viruses. And yet, the world wants to, us to think that right now there is one of the 10 to the 31 times 10 to the 31 viruses that we need protection from. And my God, we're all going to die if we don't get protected from that one virus. Well, we should be very grateful to the virome that it's only one virus within that 10 to the 31 that I breathe that would attack me today. What are the chances that we've gotten those numbers right? What's the chance that your biology is waiting for some new pharmacologic chemical solution to, you, to the relationship for this one virus? And yet we have created this multi-billion dollar narrative around the science and, and have really co-opted the science into a hundred-year-old belief system that we are waiting for the adaptive immune system and antibodies to protect us from this virus. And so I am very eager to start 2021 with you on a deep dive into what is the innate immune system and what is happening in the chemical industry, in the pharmaceutical industry at large, and in the medical industries 
to keep this narrative from emerging? How is it that we are missing so vastly the right narrative around this issue of the virome, the microbiome, and our beautiful innate relationship to it? To join me in this conversation, we'll have PhDs, MDs, and the like take different perspectives on what they've learned about not just the virome, but the innate immune system itself. How do we stay in relationship? And we're gonna dive in deep into a few layers around this that can be briefly described as a barrier system, which is the front end of the innate immune system. Most of the viruses within my bloodstream are kept at bay because my endothelial system, my, my blood vessel system, keeps me protected away from that genetic information and the need to interact with it by a fence, an intelligent gatekeeper that is called tight junction systems within my blood vessels. That barrier, it turns out, is destroyed by many of the common chemicals in our environment, a good example of which is glyphosate or Roundup. And when Roundup touches our gut or our vascular system, our blood-brain barrier, it disrupts that front barrier. And the result is uncontrolled relationship to the 10 to the 15 viruses within me. I start making proteins throughout my body that I don't need to make because I'm starting to take in genomic information that I didn't moments ago. I would die mo instantaneously with any exposure to that herbicide if that was the only layer of the innate immune system. I would be inundated immediately with so much genomic information that I couldn't, couldn't make a decision. I, I would be protein synthesis machine. I would be procreating viruses at such an extreme rate that I would have no cellular opportunity for cell repair or cell turnover on the human side. I would just be a viral machine. So the other layers that happen within the few seconds around a new virus coming in contact with a cell membrane, absorbing that genetic information and making the decision, do we need this genetic information or not, has now become realized to be the most exquisitely regulated step in human biology of any physiology, which is an extraordinary thing to say because the neurologic system, for example, is an exquisite system of checks and balances, which is, of course, beat by the endocrine system, which is the most extraordinary symphony of feedback loops, positive and negative, to create this symphony of activity and coordination between uh, parallel vascular systems, liver systems, kidney systems, to keep my body going. What an extraordinary reality that that symphony of activity is moderated not really by human measure, but by our constant interaction with the virome and the microbiome at large. We need this new genetic information to make decisions all the time as to what we're gonna to do to the environment around us. The virome is largely there to tell us what's happening around us. It's genetic information emerging from bacteria, fungi, the other animals in our environment, the other humans in our environment, to tell us what stressors are they experiencing? What are their adaptive mechanisms for those stress exposures? And then we create a virus to take that particle of adaptation out into the world. This next step after the gatekeeper of the tight junctions, this next decision point as to the genomic information and whether we should do it, which is the, the decision to take RNA or DNA and put it into a place where we can make proteins, replicate the virus or replicate proteins coded by the virus, is now understood to take over 280 different feedback loops to make the, the, the one protein allowed to, to move forward from that RNA strand. The most regulated step in biology is what keeps us safe from the virome, which keeps us in relationship to that virome. It's that step, that, that genomic regulatory step, that I get so excited about for the opportunity for us to dive into scientifically in the years to come. Because what we're going to find out in that regulatory step is how does the human body know who it is and how does the human biology know what it needs to become? And those are two very exciting things that I think are defined in this one little step of what we call the innate immune system in the, in the millions of seconds of dumping of genomic information on 10 to the 15 level uh, at any given moment into any one of the cells in my body. I am keeping track of who I am now and what I want to become tomorrow and I'm gonna regulate that at the genetic level, not at the human genome level, but at this relationship to the viromic information coming in from all of the species of the Earth. Amazingly, just in the last few months, we've been able to demonstrate that scientific, that's, that uh, we, we are starting to absorb the coronavirus that's specific to SARS-CoV-2 into the human DNA, and we can now take that RNA virus 
reverse transcribe it into our nuclear DNA and carry it forward as a human gene. I'm so excited by this reality because this means that we have now found another important update to the human genome. So far as we've decoded the human genome, we can now find signatures of viral insertion into the human genome that accounts for over 52% of the genes within our body. Let me repeat that. The majority of human genes in our body only arrived there by direct insert from viruses that were creating new adaptive capacity within not just humans, but mammals as a whole. And these are critical RNA and DNA uploads. Some 10% were actually created and inserted directly into the human genome by retroviruses similar to HIV. We need to stop fearing the virome and realize that this is literally the genomic template for life and we are moving towards a new relationship towards that. If the world is gonna suddenly express a new version of coronavirus this year, it's only momentary. We've seen coronaviruses come and go over the years. In fact, we saw a near identical coronavirus in 2002 that we would call SARS. And that first SARS pandemic was not tracked by some elusive and inaccurate PCR methodology was actually tracked by clinical presentation, which is a much more accurate way of demonstrating our real relationship to a virus. When we start to do PCR to look for fragments of genomic information on every sick person coming into a hospital, we make inevitably gross overestimations of how many people are actually showing up by way of the virus itself. And so what we have done is overestimate the burden. And if we look at 2002 and then the next event happening almost exactly 10 years later in 2011-12, we see the emergence of MERS out of the Middle East, another coronavirus near identical. And both times we saw patients showing up with hypoxia without any signs of infection, without any signs of pneumonia. And they would be hypoxic, lack of oxygen carrying capacity within the blood for two or three days. And then they would develop secondary pneumonias. Interestingly, we know by this virus and nearly every respiratory virus on earth that the virus is only gonna be in the bloodstream for on average three to four days. And the peak happens on the first day of symptoms, which means that within 72 hours, but more likely less than 48 hours after you have your first symptom, the virus is gone. Then the pneumonia show up a couple days later. The virus never caused the illness that would make that individual decay into a respiratory failure and death later on. And so what we see with this coronavirus is near identical to those we've seen in the past. And for all of the interesting conclusions we could make out of that, I want you to know something cool. Is the global innate immune system brought us into relationship with those coronaviruses within a 24 month period and it never came back again. It's always been here, always will be here, but our relationship in an unbalanced fashion to SARS and MERS and, and SARS-CoV-2 here can only last for 18 months to 24 months because we have a global innate immunity. We know how to stay in relationship to the virome and it's about to happen again. And so when we roll out an effort globally to- I want you to remember today that we have come into relationship and balance with these coronaviruses over and over and over again for over 800 years. And this is our new day, to come into relationship with not just corona, but let's have a crowning moment for humanity at this moment and realize in a humble way that we are a pixel within the biology of Earth. We are here to express a greater intelligence even outside of ourselves as to what life wants to do. It wants adaptation and it wants biodiversification. Let's build a world both at the human level and beyond that honors biodiversity. Let's build social and political structures that honor adaptation and biodiversification instead of rigidity and a fear of change. We have an opportunity to not just learn our relationship to the viruses, but actually learn our relationship to one another as we journey into the innate immune system this month together. Join us on January 14th for the Global Health Initiative that we call the innate immune system. I can't wait to be there with you.